Hey folks, how y'all doing today? Jaime Adela, part of JLD Instinctive Archery here on the Wingman 115 channel. Coming at you with an archery tip today. So stick around. Thanks for joining us today, folks. Jaime Adela, part of here. And uh, John uh, saw something that I did, a quick mod, that he wanted me to share with you guys. So I'm happy to do so. Now, I have an archery range that's three blocks from my house. And to be honest with you, through the years I've been lazy and I would just drive over there. Well... I started changing that up, doing walking more to that range, and I really didn't have a soft case for my recurve bow and arrows. I have a hard case for when I travel in flight, but just for a simple uh, three block walk, or let's say I was gonna throw my rig into uh, someone's vehicle, like today, I wanted to get a soft case, and I just had this great idea to utilize a fleece jacket. So this is what you're looking at here. This is actually one of my fleece jackets that I use when I hunt and I simply converted it into a soft case. So we're gonna get into how I build this. All right, folks, so here we go. Uh, let me first uh, explain a couple of things of what's going on here. Number one, I shoot a very short bow. I shoot a bare Kodiak Magnum, and the AM on this is 52 inches. So I'm already uh, different than a lot of other people's bows. A lot of other bows are pushing that 58, 64, 60, 64 inch length. So I say that because if you're going to try to attempt to do this, you got to make sure that the jacket or whatever coat that you want to use is going to be longer. In my in my situation here, this fleece uh, natural gear hunting jacket is uh, from from cuff to cuff. I'm looking at 64 inches because I want that fold over on the limbs. So whatever, if you want to do this project, you just got to make sure you have a jacket that's longer. Also, as far as the material goes, I think fleece just works great because it gives a little bit of a cushion. I'm sure you could use a sweatshirt, cotton, uh, maybe maybe leather if it's soft enough. But again, this is just, I'm moving from A to B. I'm not, you know, it's not planes, trains, and automobiles. Uh, for that, you want a hard case. But, so that's the first thing is you want the jacket and sleeves, you know, the wingspan to be obviously long enough, maybe another 10 inches longer to uh, get that overlap. So this is what's going in here. It's going to be the bow, the bow quiver, and the field quiver. Now before everyone starts asking, uh, I always have my arrows when I'm not big game hunting, when there are no broadheads, I normally carry my arrows with the feathers up because if I'm out in the field brush, brush shooting or bunny busting, I have small game heads. And those that know, know that they were not fit into the bow mm -hmm. quiver. Also, and more importantly, when I'm at my local range, I cannot have my bunny buster heads. Broadheads, bunny buster heads, are, they're a no-go at the range. But I still take the arrows, one, for the weight, because this is how I shoot my bow, this is how I hunt with, the, with these arrows. So I want that weight. But they also act as spare arrows in case I happen to Robin Hood an arrow, <laughs> like I do it all the time. But if you know what I mean, if I bust an arrow and knock tear up a feather, whatever the case may be, I got backup ammo here. So. Just want to put that out of the way because I know people may ask about that. And quiver that I use, simple hip quiver for this setup just because it packs easy. So let's get into the actual packing of this. So this is for, again, unstrung. If it were to be strung, it, it would not fit. My brace height's about eight and a half inches. So that's something to consider. Obviously I take my stringer to the range. Also, as I go along, I'll explain the tie downs, where they come from, and how you can improvise. You don't have to use exactly what I use, so I'll break that down. So, having the jacket, you could see that the, the neck, the shoulder, the head side is facing towards me. Uh, also, something to note, you have all these different pockets. You could put whatever extra stuff in there, your extra field points, uh, repair stuff, like super glue, knocks, whatever, whatever. So don't forget, if you have these pockets, you can use it for some small stuff. I still have another bag that I carry for additional accoutrements, but use what you got. So I start, if you notice, uh, this would be the bottom limb where the string is always looped. It's got the small loop, so it's not going to come off. And I just go ahead and slip it in. I know my brush busters kind of catch, but I want to get that pushed out all the way so that the upper limb is going to be able to go into than the other side. And I kind of keep my hand on the string so it doesn't come completely undone. Now, what I want when I line this up is I want where I'm gonna screw in my bow quiver, I want that facing me and centered with the tag. So that's gonna be a center piece. But before that bow quiver goes on, the hip quiver is gonna go on. And I already got my arm guard and my shooting tab on there. Again, I keep a separate bag for 
other stuff, spare targets, a first aid kit. But this, this kit is good to go if this is all I had. So if you notice, I went in feathers first. I kind of make sure they, they don't get too messed up, the turkey feathers. Kind of wiggle it in if I have to. And then I push it far enough where I could get the bottom end of the quiver. Slide that in. And I just try to mate it so that the, the clip buckle fits into the pistol grip. Just so that everything kind of nests and nestles within each other nicely. So I know the feathers are in there. They're not getting too roughed up. Next thing is the bow quiver. It's going to go in. I'm going to present it. Another benefit to not having field points. I'm just going to slide it in down the sleeve with the feathers. If I want to, there's some play I can just kind of move, but it glides in fairly easily. If you got a different type of bow quiver, you know, you don't have to strap it in or whatever. You could just lay it in the way I have it. And I don't have to also screw it in all the way. I just like to have it kind of secure just so it's not moving around. Again, I'm only going three blocks to my range. And then simply lay it over. We're going to zip it up. I like to do this on my bed so it makes it a lot easier. So, but here we are working with what we got. So simple and easy. Now we're going to take this, the waist part, we're going to bring it up, bring it up to the, the neck area. And now here's where we're going to talk about the certain types of straps that I'm using for this. Now, before I start tying anything down, I want to make sure that the ends are going to be in a favorable position for each end. I got to take in mind, I got arrows here. This is just a bare end. What I have on this end tied together so I don't lose it is some 550 cord. I use the lark's head hitch or the cow hitch. So for my first tie down, this is just the limb. So the arrows are sticking out on the other side. I'm going to remove this 550 cord that I have pre-staged. This is just a simple lark's head or cow hitch. So that's just there so I don't lose it when it's not being utilized for its intended purpose. So I just come around here. I want to center it so I got enough material on the outside or the outside the facing out. And I'm going to do a square knot. Those that don't know, a simple way to remember this knot is left over right. So from my perspective, this is the left side, cinch it down, left over right, and then right over left. The reason being, when it comes to two lines of equal diameter, they're going to lock into place this way. So the square knot, and it's, it, lock, it cinches down tight, but it comes apart very easily. And you can see how it has that nice look. To know if it was incorrect, like a granny knot, I'm going to do it the incorrect way. It doesn't really bite down. It looks, uh, looks sloppy. Almost looks like some kind of a, a wannabe figure eight. But yeah, you don't want that. That's going to come undone. Square knot, again, this is just the bow limb side. Top bow limb to be exact. The limb of the bow. And I cinch down good and tight. That's not going anywhere. Again, I'm not going on some amphib op or anything. I'm just, okay, so that's good. Now we're going to go to the other side. Same thing. I have this longer paracord because I have taken into account the arrows that are sitting here. Again, lark's head or cow hitch, however you want to call it. I remove it. It's a little longer because there's more real estate I got to worry about. Got the bottom limb and I got the arrows. Now I'm going to cinch down tight enough because there's some give here with these arrows. So my working end, it's in my left hand. I'm going to take it over to the right side, left over right. There's a little hitch there. And now the right side, right over left. So right over left. And again, I'm just walking a couple blocks away from home. Not a big deal. I'm not throwing it into a baggage claim. And then I do like to tuck these longer ends in just so they're not flopping around. There's no need to secure them with another kind of half hitch or anything. All right, now here's uh, a little bit more of the important part. You can improvise with what I'm about to show you, but this is what I had and what works for me. I love boonie hats, and I got a lot of them. And I do tend to cut the chin strap off of these boonie hats. But I keep those straps because I know they may come in handy for other things. So this knot, these two ends are where we're attached to the hat around the inside of the brim. So I cut those, I tied them in a knot, and then I have this loop. Now if you notice, I'll explain what this strap is going through this loop. But this is the little leather piece, that's the chin strap that cinches up, right? So what we're going to do with this is we're going to run it up the jacket now. So we're running it up the jacket. 
I can also feel the materials in there, meaning the, the quivers and the bow. So that's pre-staged. I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. I'm coming over. This is the side that has the bow quiver. Because again, this I know this is my upper limb. Same thing. Got a chin strap from a from a boonie hat here. Same concept. Cut off, tied a, tied a knot. Just a simple overhand type knot, not a square knot. But it, it, it now it's, it's feeding into this and I can feel here's the hood of the bow quiver. I want that right below it so it'll stay trapped in there. I mean, this is a lot of material. It's not going to go sliding off. So now here's one of the things I like to do. I like to roll the material so I don't have a lot of excess. If you notice that, I'm going to undo it. So I just take that waste and I roll it in. It's going to make it snug. And then same thing here with a collar. Natural gear, my favorite camouflage. I tuck that in. So it just makes a clean fold and I don't have a lot of excess material and I clean that up. And then even though I, I cinch this down, it's not gonna lock in place, but that's okay. Now, let me talk about what you're looking at here, this strap. I got a good friend of mine, he does a lot of tactical sewing. I'd give his name, but he, he likes to sew in the shadows, as he said, but thanks brother, I appreciate it. I can use this for many different things, and in this case, I happen to run it through that upper loop. And because of the buckle, that's how I did that. I was able to undo it and feed it through both loops. I think you guys can, can see how that was done. But you don't have to have a high speed tactical type of strap. You can just use more paracord or use a belt. Anything with a simple snap or you could just use some line. You know, just tie a, a good square knot. Anything that's gonna loop, loop through these ends. Now, if you don't have chin straps from a boonie hat that you cut off, improvise. You know, that, this is an exercise on ingenuity of thinking outside of the box. I didn't wanna just go and buy another case just to walk three blocks. So this is something that I think a lot of us can go through our closet. And this applies to a lot of other stuff, people. You know, think of what you have and, and work with it. I think it's instead of just going and, and buying stuff, making your own stuff on the fly is pretty cool as long as it works and it's secure. So in this case, that's it. It's ready to go. If I wanted to, I could go this way and throw it over my shoulder. Uh, this way, I just walk with it in my hand like a little case. So you can imagine me walking down the street. How's it going? Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> and if anybody were to question me if that's firearm, I don't think it looks like a firearm. So anyways, that's my soft case mod from a fleece jacket. I challenge you guys to try to do that if it's something that you need. It's just an easy way to transport your gear from A to B. Again, we're not uh, we're not doing we're not going to to on an Alaska or a safari hunt. This is just a quick trip. Want to protect your gear, and uh, I'm a cheap. So thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope this helped you guys out. If you guys got any questions, throw it in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. But thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next video.